Okay, so let's continue with our. Um, so the first thing I'll show you is that in addition to the, uh, in addition to the. There's this other wall website where you can see a chart of eyeball. Okay. Um, this strike, this link is also given to you in your notes. Okay. So you can use this also to uh, check for historical eyeball data in addition to eyeballutility.com. Okay. This is clear. Are you guys following what is being taught in the options project? It's a little more complicated. So if you have problems, you have to ask questions. But I've given you a structure to solve most of the decision problems. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So this this link is also in your uh, notes. Okay. In this uh, particular note, the conceptual framework. In the middle of this note, you will find where I've given you a whole bunch of tickers. You will find this ticker as well. And here you can also, if you click that ticker, you will see. I can show you where it is here. Um, Yeah, this one, this is where it is, okay? When I talk about the VIX and the SPY, uh, we're talking about different strats. So where are the tickers? Okay, uh, here you can see this website. Okay, if you click this, you will get this kind of a display, which also gives you historical, okay, it helps you to see, yeah, it helps you to see eyeball charts, okay? And you can see eyeball charts compared with the closing price of the underlying. So what you're seeing in this chart, okay, keep, please note here, guys, this stuff is all very complicated. You have to make sure that very, the whole point of doing these classes is that whenever we are covering something, I don't mind if we cover only half a concept in the whole class, but whatever we cover, everyone should be clear about it. If you're not clear about it, it should be as clear as two plus two is four. If it's, it's because I'm explaining to you stepwise. It's complicated, but I'm explaining stepwise. If, I, if you don't understand, I'll explain it again. But you make sure that whatever material we cover, uh, you are very clear about that. Okay. So here, what is the ticker that we are covering? What is the underlying? On this chart, what is the underlying asset? Triple Q. Triple Q. Okay. So triple Q is a, what is it? ETF or what? It's an ETF, right? And what is the underlying, what is the index that that particular ETF tracks? That's SPY. S&P 500 is tracked by the SPY ETF. The QQ, the triple Q tracks the NASDAQ 100. Okay, so the NASDAQ has a, uh, there's another NASDAQ index called the NASDAQ composite, which is broader. This one tracks only NASDAQ, there's a separate index called the NASDAQ 100, which is, NASDAQ is mostly focused on tech stocks. Okay, so the top 100 stocks on the NASDAQ, there's a separate index for that called NASDAQ 100. I've given you the tickers in your spreadsheet. In your ticker <laughs> spreadsheet, it is carrot for Yahoo Finance. The ticker the NASDAQ 100 index is carrot NDX. Okay, that is Nancy uh, Nancy David Xmas NDX. That's for the NASDAQ 100 index. That's an index like the NSE, the Nifty 50 is an index, the BSE 200 is an index, and this is an ETF. The triple Q is an ETF which tracks the index. Are you following yes, yes. all these concepts? You should be sure. So, your the because it's an ETF, it trades like a stock. So buying and selling Microsoft, buying and selling Oracle shares, no different really in terms of the mechanics of it than buying and selling Triple Q or buying and selling SPY. The ETF trades like a stock. Okay, this is clear. So now the Triple Q is the ETF that you're tracking that's given to you because it's one of the most liquid ETFs, very actively traded. Most of the ETFs that have been given to you, be, be, uh, ETFs and stocks are because they're very, they're, I've chosen it from different sectors. There's a mix of sectors and there are, these are all very high volume tickers, okay, very high volume tickers, so the options will also be quite liquid. So here you notice that normally with the eye volatility charts, remember that eye volatility website I gave you, with those eye volatility charts, the uh, the data doesn't go, the eyeball data, the eyeball time series chart doesn't go beyond one year. You remember that? Yes. Sir. Those charts don't. So I personally like to look at lots of historical data as much as possible, okay? 20 years, 30 years, as much as you can get. So here you have a little bit better, slightly better situation because you can see the panel below, the second panel. Can you guys see the panel below? 
Okay, so here if you drag the panel below, you can see much more data. It's much more than one year of eyeball data. So, because remember, you're going to be betting on, see here in this chart on the top panel, you can see both the uh, main drivers of your option pro trading profit. Can you see both the drivers? If we are now we are focusing on one one ticker only, one ticker that is the Q, uh, triple Q. You can replace this logic with all the other tickers. So, what are the two main drivers of the way that you guys have been asked to trade this particular project? Right, only buying and selling options, no trading in the underlying. So, what are what are the things that are going to drive your uh, option profitability, option trading profitability? Maybe my question is not clear. Let me just explain it as an answer. So what I'm trying to show you is that in this chart, you can see both the key variables that are going to, I mean, uh, the accuracy of, of your views on which are going to determine your option trading PL. Because what are you doing? You're taking a view on the underlying. Remember, first you're taking a view on the underlying. Or you can also take the view on the eyeball first. But you first take a view on the underlying, which means you look at the blue chart. The blue line here, the close is the underlying which is the triple Q okay so you take a view on the triple Q and then you take a view on the eyeball right which way is the triple Q chart going to go and which way is the eyeball chart going to go so in this display you can see both together okay and uh, so this is basically showing you the two key variables so in your option trading you are mainly betting on these two variables both are variables because the value is changing over time okay so these are the two things that you're betting on. Just like if you're trading sugar, if you're just trading sugar in the cash market, no options. That means your profitability will be depend will depend on how well you can predict the sugar price. Of course, it also gets affected by risk management and all that. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So here you can see in this display the two key variables that are going to drive your I mean the your views on which the views on which are going to drive your uh, profitability of your option trading. So you can set up the views like this. This is clear in optionistic, you'll get a little bit more data. Plus I've given you other charts also. So this is just to show you this particular chart that this option is there. This uh, this website can also be used. Okay. So another thing that you notice here, remember when we discussed briefly, there is a part in your notes <laughs> called Still not getting a full view. Yeah. We have discussed this point earlier once before. Okay. I can't get everything in one view. I'll have to use this. Okay, guys, so you remember I've discussed this point before, what you're able to see on that chart. I'm just repeating it once again, making the connection. This is a relationship that you should be aware of. Baba was asking a question about it earlier, whether he can rely on it as a law of physics. Okay, but generally the, in the case of equity options, generally in the case of equity options, okay, uh, whether it's an equity index or it's an individual equity, Okay, uh, what you see is that there is an inverse relationship between the underlying and the eyeball charts. Are you following my statement? Yes, sir. First, understand my statement from a logic, that, I mean, from an English language point of view, then I'll show you the picture. So, for equity op options, there is a general tendency for an inverse relationship between the underlying chart and the eyeball chart. This is clear. Which is eyeball chart is plotting the prices of options on that underlying. Okay. So if you see, if you go back to, can you see that here as well? Can you see that relationship here also? Yes, sir. That as the underlying price is rising, and the there is a tendency for the eyeball to come down. Okay. So be clear about what the eyeball is. Understand clearly what the eyeball is. The eyeball is nothing but an index of. You can think of it as an index of average option prices on the triple Q. Okay, both calls and puts. Okay, they take average of those prices and they plot the eyeball. Okay, so it's it's basically eyeball going down means option prices are declining. Eyeball going up means option prices are 
uh, increasing. Is this clear? Okay. We have repeated this thing many many times, but since this is so important, you have to be clear about this. Okay. So also remember that this is a general tendency. It's not a law of physics. So you can't just close your eyes and say, I'm going to, if you have a strong view on the underlying, how it's going to move, then you go opposite on the eyeball. And you know, there are many hedge funds which are actually going broke these days because of this kind of situation. They're actually playing the opposite view. You can hear very recently, I heard of one hedge fund that had to shut down. So what almost a $940 million fund, the AUM was 940 million. They had to return money to investors because their profit, they're not making money. Why? Because they were following this view that they had a bearish view on the stock market. Okay, so they had a very bearish view on the stock market. So what they did is they went and bought, bought huge amount of options. Are you following the logic? <coughs> bearish view on the underlying, which means they expect the underlying chart to start falling down sharply. And normally what, as I said, there's a general tendency when the underlying chart drops sharply, the, what will happen to the eyeball? Rise. Eyeball will rise. Okay, so they're betting on this. That's why, why they do, and what will happen to option prices when eyeball charts rise? Rise. Option prices will also increase. So what they are doing in anticipation of that, they went and bought a whole bunch of options. But obviously when you buy options, do you have to pay or you have to receive money? You have to pay money. Just like when you buy car insurance, you have to pay money. When you buy medical insurance, you have to pay money. right? And then if the bad event happens, then the insurance company pays you money. But in this case, when you buy options, you have to pay money. So they have paid out a lot of premium to buy options on the view that the stock market will fall. Okay, and then the option, the eyeball will shoot up and then their options will rise in value and then they'll make a profit, but it didn't work. So remember that this is not a law of physics. So you have to be very careful about how you try to exploit this situation to make this relationship to make money. You have to be very watchful. Is this clear? Yes. Okay, so we've learned a few things. We're just recapping stuff. Okay, so. Okay, now let's try and understand eyeball a little bit better. I've just, I've, I'll, I will put this as a separate note for you guys. Okay. Okay. One more thing I want to just clarify regarding, oh, this is too high. Can you, is this big enough for those on the last bench? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Like we should ask Dina, is this bigger than the font on your, on your phone, on your WhatsApp messages, <laughs> which you are watching? Okay, 105, let's try 105, a little bit bigger. Okay, all right. So on this, remember we had various decision problems. Yes. Okay, in option trading, we have various decision problems. Okay, uh, let's go to your... Okay, so we have all, all these decision problems. One of the decision, I think you have fairly clear, I think you have a fairly clear idea by now about how to solve all these other problems. Okay, you have the matrix that I've given you, you can solve this structure. The only thing I want to em emphasize once again is the strike. Okay, how you choose the strike because this is not so clear cut. Okay, for instance, expiry theta versus vega, this is fairly clear cut that when you're selling, you want to sell short dated options. So let me just talk about this a little bit more. Okay, um, here. Okay, so there are three things that you have to watch out for in strikes, in, in choosing the strike. The first is, remember when you go to the option trader, okay, in the TWS option trader, you see that display of prices, remember? You have the straddle view, you have the call prices on one side, put prices on one side, bid and offer. Yeah. You remember or no? Yes. You're really looking lost. I hope you guys are opening the option trader sometimes, yes, like night by mistake, yes, maybe. Okay, so when you bounce over, are you able to see the percentages? Yes, sir. Okay, so those percentages are the eyeballs corresponding to those prices. Okay, so what did we say? That eyeball is an index of the option price. So when you're obviously, when you're a buyer, you want to buy cheap stuff. When you're a seller, you want to sell expensive stuff. Okay, so therefore, when you're buying, one of the guides is how do you choose your strike? And you'll notice that the eyeballs are not the same. One, even when you lock in the expiry, 
Okay, even when you lock in the expiry, you will find that the eyeballs are not the same for all the strikes for a given expiry. Even for one expiry, the eyeballs are not the same. I think I showed you this one chart here. Oh, this is the other chart. Okay, we have. Let's try and look at the ball skew here. Okay, so it's like this. Essentially, what you'll see is this. Okay, so if you look at this one, this particular chart, can everyone see this? Okay. Yeah. So here, this is on uh, at Apple. Okay, this is on Apple for options expiring on May 19. Okay, so please be careful. Understand these terms. This is a new term also that you're uh, learning. The ball strike. This is sometimes called ball smile. Sometimes called a ball skew. But the main point to understand is contrary to what the option pricing theory says. Okay, the eyeball is not the same for, for once you lock in the maturity. See what I've done on the left panel. I've locked in the maturity. We are only looking at May 19 options. Okay, I have locked in the expiry date. Remember. Because you have to choose expiry also, that's one of the decision problems. Are you guys following? Yes, sir. So I have locked in the expiry now and I'm looking at Apple. I'm looking at options on Apple. Okay, the underlying is Apple common stock. But you notice that the, uh, and here they're showing you that Apple currently must be, the price must be somewhere between, somewhere must be around 172 or something. The price here is 171. Okay, so that's where the, this is where the at the money is. Is this clear? Are you following? Yes. Okay. Yes? What happened, Karaj? Please repeat this. Okay. So, this chart is telling you that the current price of Apple is 171. Are you seeing it? Yes. The current price is 171. Okay. So, on this chart, maybe you can't read the uh, writing over here. You can't read. No. You can, you can read call input. I don't know if you can read the uh, x axis. Uh, numbering 165 the line the blue line the vertical blue line is between 165 and 175 but it's closer to 175 actually the vertical blue line is at 171 which is where the price of apple is okay is this clear are you following so what this chart is showing you what try to understand this this is the uh, point this what they're showing you here is the ball skew okay this is called the volatility skew or also called the volatility smile okay so what this basically the idea is that even when you lock in the expiry for a particular expiry when you start looking at different strikes are you following for any one expiry you will see multiple strikes now when you look at that's when you mouse over in the TWS you mouse over the bid offer for different strikes you will find that the eyeballs are different it's not the same eyeball okay the eyeballs are different that is because that's how the market is if, even though the option pricing theory says all I want should be the same but in real life it doesn't work like that so they have different levels different values so here you can see in the money calls you can see that the eyeballs are higher it's nearly 30 percent that 0 0.29 0 0.3 the y-axis numbering is in percentage okay that 0 0.29 0 0.31 means it's around 30 percent so you can see that the out of the money calls and puts are trading if you take the 145 calls and puts roughly it is trading somewhere around 29%. Okay, so are you following? Whereas if you look at the at the money calls and puts, where is it? Somewhere around 25%. Can you see that? 0 0.2. Somewhere here, basically, right? So it is around 24%. <laughs> it's around 25%. The at the money eyeballs are around 25%. For at the money strikes, are you following? But when you look at slightly uh, in the money calls, out of the money puts, the, they have already given you the numbers, 30%, 29%, not clear. Okay, one minute. First, is it clear what I have done in this picture? Yes, lock in the expiry date. I have locked in the expiry date. Remember, you have multiple decision problems in option trading. One of them is you have gone through all the buys and everything. Okay, let's say you have decided to buy calls. 
Okay, that's it. As an example, okay. So you have decided you formed a view on the underline which was bullish. You formed a view on the eyeball which was also bullish. So your decision is to buy calls. Okay. Now you have another problem, which expiry date. Okay, there are so many expiry dates. But generally we say that if you are going to be a buyer of options, you should buy longer dated. Okay, that also is not so clear cut because this is going to be May, June, July, August, September, what? Okay, so let's say I have decided that should be May. Okay, so all the decision problems are solved, but I have still got one more problem left. Which strike should I buy? Call option in, at which strike? Are you following? Yes, sir. One more decision problem remains because I have to buy a call option in so many strikes. Which strike should I buy? This is clear. So that decision, how do you solve? So the first rule I gave you is that when you mouse over the now you lock in your expiry and you mouse over, you're looking at options of a particular expiry at a point of time, you only see like that. Ultimately, you can see multiple rows of it will come in blocks one below the other. So when you mouse over the different the bid offer for different strikes, you will see that the eyeballs are different. Okay, so now that I have decided to buy calls, that means I'm a buyer of options. I should buy low. I should look for lower eyeballs or higher eyeballs. Lower eyeballs. Lower eyeballs. In general, I want to buy lower eyeballs. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. That this is an opportunity to learn about one term, which is the uh, volatility skew, or sometimes called volatility smile. Okay. But essentially, what you have to remember is what is the phenomenon that it's referring to. Okay. The phenomenon that it's referring to is that even when you lock in a particular expiry. The eyeball, which you can already see in the TWS option trader when you mouse over, that when you move across strikes and you mouse over the bids and offer, the percentage eyeballs being shown are not the same. Are you following? So, this is the reality of the market. You can try this for any kind of stock underlines that you look at Microsoft, Oracle, you know, Salesforce, whatever you want to look at. You will find pretty much the same phenomenon everywhere. Very rarely will you find that this line is like a straight line. This will not be parallel to the x-axis. Okay, very rarely. If it is, it's a coincidence. Okay, generally it will be Nagpal on the right-hand panel, the middle chart. You see the middle chart above yes. Nagpal on the right-hand panel. That is also showing the same kind of phenomenon. That the is showing you the ball smile. That is the most symmetrical smile. Okay, so uh, it's it's like a smile. Here it's kind of like a, they call it a skew. Sometimes call it a smile. But the point to remember is this, that eyeballs are not the same for different strikes, even though the expiry may be the same. Is this clear? That's all it means. Okay. So eyeball, ball, ball smile, ball skew. And so coming back to the choice of strike, you still have a decision problem to solve. You have decided to buy calls, which strike should I buy? So you bounce over here and you see that, okay, some, uh, the eyeballs are different. Okay. So here, if I'm a buyer of options. I will obviously go here or there. I would tend to go here or there. I tend to go here because these are lower. The eyeballs are an index of option prices, right? So if I'm looking for cheaper options to buy, I don't look at the absolute premium. I look at the eyeballs. So then naturally, my choice of strike would be towards this one. Okay. Now there are a couple of other considerations. Okay. So generally, I'll be here. Now a couple of other considerations. What you have to look at is your view on the underlying, okay? Because obviously, sometimes if you are looking at, sometimes you may want to exercise your options, etc. So you have to look at the view on the underlying. Let's say we look at this. Okay, so I don't know why that has got 171 and the price seems to be 180. Doesn't matter, we, we don't have to worry about this. Okay, so the point is, okay. So here I have to also look at the view on the underlying. Remember that sometimes if I might want to, if I'm taking a particular view that uh, within within one month or two months, Apple will cross two hundred dollars. Okay, and I want to exercise my option. Okay, and buy the stock at a lower price and then sell the stock. You might have various 
uh, reasons for taking a particular uh, for uh, taking a particular type of view on the underlying. So your view on the underlying is also important. Okay, uh, in the choice of the strike, that can also play a role. The most important factor should be the level of the eyeball. When you are buying, you should buy low eyeball options. When you are selling, you should sell high eyeball options. But there are some other considerations. Okay, in case you are looking to exercise, etc., you also make, should take care of the view on the underlying. Okay, and the other thing that you have to also watch out for is that this other factor which okay what I'm trying to say here is okay Vega You remember what is meant by moneyness of options? Why is there a lot of murmuring in the class? Should I get up and see who is murmuring? <coughs> you remember what is meant by moneyness? There is a part in your notes which talks about moneyness. Yes, Rhea is nodding aggressively as soon as she hears money. Yes, what is moneyness? What is the moneyness of options? Valuation of options. No, valuation. Money, Correct. Who said add the money? Malotra. Okay. So add the money. Okay. So uh, moneyness talks about add the money, in the money, out of the money. Okay. That's what when we talk about moneyness of options, we are using one word to refer to all these kinds of scenarios. Either it's in the money, at the money, out of the money. Okay. So moneyness of option refers to that. So the point is that the third thing you have to look at. So the strike of strike is a little more complicated. It's not so clear cut. Main factor is uh, cheaper <laughs> options, lower eyeballs if you are buying and reverse. Okay, but there's the reason you have to look out for this is that um, remember you're playing on eyeball. Okay, so if you look at where is the option price calculator? Okay, Okay, so this is your option price calculator. You already have the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Greek graphs, okay? So what is the Greek, uh, it's actually not a Greek letter, but what is the term we use for, uh, to denote the sensitivity of the option price to changes in the eyeball? Beta. Beta. Vega. 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 Right? Vega. So the, you can remember Las Vegas, maybe that's an easy way to remember it. Okay, so I, I like to say that US option traders generally live in Las Vegas because of Vega. Okay, so you can remember it that way. So Vega is the word, remember it's not actually a Greek letter. Okay, that's why sometimes people use Kappa or Lambda which are Greek letters. But normally the market parlance is Vega. Okay, so although these are all called Greeks. Okay, all right. So uh, Vega is what we are interested in. Okay, because remember we are talking about eyeballs. We are talking about choosing the strike in such a way that you buy the ones with the low eyeballs, right? Where is that option at excite? Right? What were we saying? That if I'm a buyer of options, as a result of all my decision problems being solved in the earlier stages, then I will try to buy options which have the lowest, lower eyeballs, okay? But there is another consideration here, so that is leading me to, if I'm a buyer of calls, right? And if I want to buy calls with lower eyeball, okay, which is uh, greens, okay. So what should be, what should, what strike eyeball, what strike call should I buy? What is the minimum point here? 195? You agree? Yes. 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 You agree? That if I am a buyer of calls, Nimish not convinced. I have just assumed that in the earlier decision problems, we are moving down the tree, right? So we have to assume at any level, we have to assume that all the previous decisions have been solved. So we make some arbitrary assumptions. So at this stage, I am only concerned with the problem of which strike to choose. So for the previous decision problem, I am making some arbitrary assumptions that I had decided to buy calls. And I had also decided to uh, go for this May 19 expiry. So my expiry date decision is also solved, right? I'm assuming that all the other decision problems like Centris Paribus. When you're trying to solve one particular problem, you assume that the other problems are solved in some arbitrary way, okay? 
So it's clear? So now, therefore, what is the most important rule for uh, deciding which strike to choose? The most important rule is go for eyeball levels. Okay? Mouse over the TWS, see where what the eyeball levels is. It's not necessary that the chart will always look like this. It can have all kinds of funny shapes. Like that, you see the chart is more symmetrical. This is not symmetrical, that one is more symmetrical. Okay? So it can have all kinds of funny shapes. But you mouse over the TWS bid prices, offer prices, and see what the levels are. So generally you want to buy lower. Since I'm buying calls, therefore I will buy. This is where the call green is called. Yeah. So the call eyeball chart is lowest at this point. So I will buy 195 strike calls. Is everyone clear now? Dimish? Are you clear now? How we have solved the decision problem? Okay, but this is just one part of it. My like choice of strike is a little bit more nuanced because I also have to worry about the view on the underlying, how the price is going to move, how the underlying is going to move because that will have an impact on. Because remember, since I've bought call options, what are the two main ways I'm going to make money? I bought call options on Apple. So either Apple stock goes up, that way I can make money. Mm -hmm. Assuming the eyeball doesn't change, okay? Apple stock goes up. Another way to make money is Apple stock doesn't move, but the eyeball goes up. Clear? Is everyone clear? Yes. What? Not more aggressively. Yes. yes sir. Sir. Good, good, good. So I, I, need, I need to see a response. Everybody looking like half dead, uh, you know. So I, I need to see an expression so that I can, you know, get some uh, confidence that you have understood. Then I can move on to the next point. Okay. So, uh, so there are two ways to make money when you're buying or selling options. In this case, we are buying call options that I can make money in two broad ways. Either the stock price goes up or the eyeball goes up. Clear? Both are separate parallel considerations. Now, so this is where now the eyeball goes up. Remember, the extent to which that the extent to which the option prices will respond to a rise in the eyeball. It's a relationship. It's not the same for all kinds of strikes. Now we are coming to another point. That's why I said. That's why I'm trying to emphasize this other point, which is what I've written down here. Vega versus moneyness. So remember this one by one. I had decided to choose using the first rule, the most important rule. I decided to choose the 195 Apple call to buy because the 195 Apple call has the lowest I bought. Okay, but as I said, I'm adding some nuances to that rule now because although that is the most important rule, there are some other factors. Okay, so there is in that other factor you have to consider these two: your view on the underlying market and the fact that Vega is not the same for ATM, ITM, and OTM. Vega is not the same. Are you following my point? Yes, we'll see visually what it is and what is Vega. Vega is. Sensitivity of, option, of the option price to changes in the eyeball. Okay, because what am I trying to play? As I said just now in the previous uh, sentence, that I can make money in two ways: underlying price goes up or eyeball goes up. Let's say the second part happens: eyeball goes up. Now, how much money I'm going to make when the eyeball goes up depends on the vega of the option that I bought. Okay, remember this. Please make sure you follow this. These are complicated, uh, slightly complicated logic, but if you follow it step by step and you ask questions, then you will not get confused and you will revise it once. Okay? So remember, you will not get this kind of a simplistic framework, structured framework. You won't find it in any book. Okay? I have to actually put this together. So uh, if you if you understand it, you will be able to retain it for life. So remember this chart. What is this saying? This is not saying anything about the beta. It is only showing me the plot of the eyeballs as a function of the strike. This is an XY graph. Y is the eyeballs, X is the strikes. Okay? And I can see here this is ATM. These are out of the money, uh, these are in the money calls, these are out of the money calls. Okay? So I have actually bought an out of the money call. Okay, at 195. Okay, now here is the thing. So now I bought this, I didn't see anything about the Vega. I didn't check the Vega of the different calls, of the different strikes. So the new point is that Vega is however not the same for all the strikes. 
So you need to also be worried about the Vega. So it's a delicate balancing act, okay? And that's why you also have to have the view on, uh, understanding of the view on the underlying. Are you following so far? Yes. Okay, let's understand this a little bit better. Why do we need to worry about the Vega? Because remember, I'm buying calls, I want to make money. And the second way for me to make money is when the eyeball jumps, I will make money. But how much money I will make on the 195 call as a result of 1% jump in the eyeball depends on, the depends on the Vega of the 195 call. Yes. Okay. Now the Vega, now the 195 call is out of the money or in the money? OTM. OTM. Okay. So therefore now a new, new, new idea is being introduced that Vega versus moneyness. Vega is not the same for ATM, OTM, ITM. Okay, so Vega is the highest for ATM calls. Look at this. Okay, so here I go. This is the option. We are just keeping the standard. Let me just look at a slightly more longer dated option. Okay, so now you can see, okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to go for the Greek graphs at the bottom here. You see the Greek graphs. Guys on the last bench, can you see? Chabra, can you see this? Okay, so Greek graphs give you a chance to plot long call delta, short call delta. It is giving me all kinds of options. Okay, so let's look at just let's look at a small simple example of long call gamma because that's what I'm interested in. I'm looking at buying the 195 Apple call. So my position is going to be long call. Okay. So I ask it to plot the long call gamma. Okay. All right. So let's let me just change this a little bit. It's uh, let me just go for a different. Let's go for this. Okay, this is a better chart actually, 1%. Okay, so what is the, what is the, un, what is the at the money strike here for this? Remember the underlying is 100. So for this chart, now we are not discussing the Apple chart. Don't get confused. Now we are discussing the option price. We are on this website. So here, what is the at the money strike? Okay, guys, what happened? Underlying is at 100. So where is the at the money strike here? 100. Everyone can see the chart? Yes. 100. The at the money strike is 100? Yes. Prachi is not convinced. What happened? Are you convinced? No, don't just get convinced because I'm almost shouting saying, are you convinced? Yes. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Not clear, I think some. Yes. This I'm not looking at that earlier chart anymore. I'm looking at the option price website. I looked at I just did I just looked at this price here. The underlying price is hundred. The underlying price is hundred. Okay, in this I have just done the uh, Greek graphs for this particular plot. Okay, this particular set of parameters. And what is it showing? What is here? This what is the y-axis here? Oh, sorry, I'm plotting gamma and Mr. I'm actually talking to you about Vega. So, you should have told me, right? I, I kind of, in the middle of all this, I got confused also. I was also confused about the, that's why I was a little bit confused. Where's the Vega? Okay. Okay, let's call, uh, let's do this. Okay, long call Vega now. Long call Vega. Okay, now please write down, Sina, please write down Kriti's name. Sir, uh, Piche, who told you to look back? <laughs> what is this gamma 1%? This is a 1% uh, move in the underline. So this is for 1% move. Respond to 1% move. How will the gamma respond to 1%? How is the gamma going to change for 1% move in the underline? Okay. So, uh, this one sec. So long call Vega. Where are we? Okay, long call Vega. Okay. Okay, so once again, remember guys, what is the underlying price? 100. So what is the at the money strike here? 100. So can you see that the Vega is the highest for at the money? See, this is 100. If I do a perpendicular, 
Vega is highest. So this is the general rule. Okay. So the Vega is the highest for at the money options. Okay. So this is a general rule. So you can plot it and you can test it by yourself. You have to play around with the stuff. Okay, option trading is a little more complicated and you are not even getting into the fullest level of complication which is when you start hedging all the tricks. Okay, here you are just doing an introductory level of buying and selling options. Sir, 50 to 20 minutes. I am here. Okay, there will be a lot of time decay by then. No? There will be a lot of feedback by then. Okay, alright guys. <laughs> One minute. I don't have anything to bang with today. Okay. Okay, guys. Please be quiet. I told you behave like mature adults. I don't even care what the time is. For your information, I didn't even go home last night. Okay. I was. I I basically slept four hours on my chair. I had to finish the presentation. Okay, so don't be a bunch of cry baby. I am more than quite your age. So if I can do that, you can sit here quietly and uh, just try to concentrate. And we are not wasting our time. We are learning important things which you don't know. Okay, where are we? We are learning something new. That Vega is highest for at the money options. Okay. Now, what is the general rule? What is the general rule that we were talking about? I said initially that the most important rule we are we are still concerned with the problem of choosing the strike, which strike to choose. So I said most important rule is pick the ones which have the lowest eyeballs if you are buying. Okay, and that's why I went into the 195 strike. Okay, and so you see one thing here. You have seen this rule that make this is always true. Vega is highest for at the money options. Okay, and so now let's go back to my decision problem. Okay, well, to my solution to the decision problem. Yeah, what did I do? Did I choose to buy the? One minute, guys. Please, please be quiet. Did I choose to buy the at the money option? I bought an OTM option. Okay, so that means I did not buy the option with the highest vega. Yes. Is this clear? Yes. Sir. By using the rule of choose the one when you are buying, buy the cheapest eyeballs when you are selling, buy sell the highest eyeballs, the most expensive eyeballs. By using that eyeball rule, I ended up choosing. I I, I ended up buying a option strike which does not have the highest vega. Yes. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. Yes? Yes. Are yes. you following? Okay. So, if that is the case, then is it fair to say that if the eyeball actually does go up, and my view turns out to be right and the eyeball does go up, I am actually not maximizing my benefit in that sense because the option price response to the change in the eyeball is not going to be maximum for the 195. It would be maximum for the 171 or something like that. Are you following what I'm saying? Please make sure everybody understands this. Nikhil, what is the problem? Yes. What time is your class? Uh, it's not over. 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 So we don't want any commotion in the corridor. So we're continuing with the classes. Uh, they are now going to the first row. So after that, they'll come here. So for another half an hour or something, just continue, they will not... Obviously, I will continue, don't worry. <laughs> don't give them an opportunity to decide when the class is over. Okay, pull it. Alright guys, let's get back to work. Okay, let's get back to work, come on. Are you following where we were in the discussion? Yes, I That by buying the 195 call, I bought the 195 call because I followed that rule that when I am buying options, I will buy the option with the lowest eyeball. And when I am selling options, I sell the option with the highest eyeball. Okay, I did that. But the problem now is that if my view on eyeball turns out to be correct, I have not bought the eyeball with the highest vega. Are you following? You don't worry about whether they are here or not. When they come, they will come. Okay. You do your job. Okay, just to concentrate on the class. Okay? Are you following? So I haven't bought the eyeball, the, the strike with the highest vega. Okay? 
So therefore, in some way, my decision is suboptimal. Are you able to follow what I'm saying? My decision to buy the 195 call was in some way suboptimal. Do you understand what is suboptimal? Ridhima, Dina, Pranav, please look up from your WhatsApp and concentrate on the class. Okay. Uh, now, you, for, you understand what is meant by suboptimal? Yes. Suboptimal, the optimal means best possible choice. Suboptimal means anything which is, which is not the best possible choice. It could have been improved. Okay. So, that means that from the point of view of maximizing the benefit, see, why am I buying options? One of the reasons I am buying options is, uh, one of the reasons I am buying options is also because I want to benefit from a rise of I want rise in I want. So if I had bought the option with the highest vega, then I would have benefited the most yes. from a rise in eyeball. Are you following? Yes, yes, yes. yes or no? Yes, yes, sir, sir. Sir. yes. So what I'm trying to show you here is I shall write down uh, again. I don't know why I just keep sitting next to Rakwal. Write down Ayush also. So we have Prithi and Ayush contributing. Don't don't uh, create problems. Okay. All right. So um, I also get distracted. So. so what was I saying? Suboptimal. Yeah, suboptimal. So by by choosing to buy the lowest uh, eyeball options, trying for the lowest eyeball, I have made I I have compromised on the ability to benefit from a jump in the eyeball. Have you understood this point? Yes. Because I ended up buying an option strike. Okay. Okay. So uh, all right. So uh, I have. Uh, I have compromised on my ability to benefit. I did not end up buying the stock, uh, buying the strike which had the highest vega. So the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that we are learning a new rule. We are learning a new rule here. What is happening here? What are you guys looking at? Don't look at the screen. I've just kept the screens there just for information. Please look at what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, the point I'm trying to emphasize here is that highest vega. Okay, so therefore, uh, at the money options are the highest vega. That's why I said that that your view on the underlying also is important. And in general, one one of the reasons that you might want to buy at the money options or sell at the money options is because the vega is the highest. If you are confident about your ball view, if you are confident about your eyeball view, you will get maximum bang bang for the buck by trading at at the money options. You following? Yes. yes. So there is a trade off here, it's not so clear cut. But by buying at the money options or selling at the money options, although your beta is maximum, so your eyeball view, if it's correct, will give you maximum benefit. But you may very well not be buying the cheapest or selling the most expensive options because remember here, are the eyeballs the highest for at the monies? Are the, are the eyeballs, uh, if you are buying, are the eyeballs the lowest for at the monies? Yes. yes. Mm. How is it the lowest? No. It's around 25, 24, 24. No. They are not the lowest. The lowest is around 22, 23, 22 and a half. Are you following? Yes. So there is a conflict here basically. It's not easy to decide the, to, to solve the decision problem of which strike to buy. Because one hand, on the one hand, you have a rule which says yeah. always buy options which have the lowest high eyeball, mm -hmm. always sell options which have the highest eyeball. Okay. On the other hand, you have another rule which is that the vega is highest for at the money options. So if you trade at the money options and your eyeball view is correct, you will get maximum bang for the buck. Are you following? Because vega is what? Vega is the sensitivity of the option price to changes in the eyeball. Are you following? Yes. It's like I'm talking to a bunch of zombies. It's already one and a half hours is over. Yes. Yes. Okay, never mind. Just concentrate. If I can keep on speaking like this, you are just sitting there and looking at your WhatsApp. Just uh, you can easily continue for a little bit longer. Okay. Now, uh, so so the point is the beta is the highest for at the money options. Okay. So therefore, if you want to really get bang for your buck, that is, if your eyeball view is correct, you should get maximum benefit in the movement of the option price. That will lead you to buy and sell at the money options, okay? But the rule of the the rule of eyeball being 
always buy low alcohol options, always sell high alcohol options. That will lead you to a different choice of strike. As you can see that let me in this example, that let me to buy the 195 call for Apple. Right? Are you following the logic? Yeah. So the point is, it's not so clear cut. Right? So here you go here, you get some benefit but you lose some benefit. You go there, you get some other benefit but you lose this benefit. So the point is that this decision is not so clear cut. So you have to balance it out. And why did I talk about the underlying view? Because, see, when you have this, see this is where Apple is now. So right now, forget about that other chart, maybe it's a little bit old data. 171 means maybe it's one day old. Maybe it's, yeah, I think last night's price action is not there. That's why this last move is not captured. Okay, uh, so, <coughs> so let's say the Apple will run up, let's say you decide to buy at the money options today at 183, okay, with the 183 strike. What will happen, let's say the price runs up very sharply. Okay, suddenly the oil, uh, price runs up to 210 in one day. Now suddenly, is your 185 or 185 call, is it at the money now? No. When you bought it, it was at the money, but suddenly the price has shot up to 215. 215, so now it's an in the money call. Are you following? So now the vega of that call is not the highest. Okay, are you following? So there is a delicate balance, there is a multiple, you have to play a game with multiple moving parts. Because you have to, because the price is also moving, the underlying price is moving constantly. So you have to take a forward view of how the underlying price is likely to move over the, like if you are buying a one month option. Over the next month, how is the underlying likely to move? Okay, and when do you approximately want to cash out from your option? Okay, or when do you see the ball in movement in the eyeball coming? Because remember one thing that might happen, if you go back to this, here, here we have the ball skew, okay, look at this, okay. So what might happen is, here this is Apple now, we are looking at Apple, okay. So once again you can see more or less that as the price overall is moving up, the eyeball in general is coming down, okay. So now what will happen is that, uh, you have to, so the point I am trying to emphasize is that the choice of strike is very complex. There are many factors at play. On the one hand you want to buy low eyeball, sell high eyeball. On the other hand you want to be trading, buying and selling at the money because the vega is the highest so if you get your eyeball view right then you will get maximum bank for your work okay. and the third thing is you also have to have a view on the underlying because what might happen is this underlying view remember everything doesn't move together okay yes. so the under if you have a bullish view on the underlying the underlying may move very quickly but the eyeball may not move much Okay, so it's, everything is very complex. The number of scenarios is very complex. Okay, very, very high. So this may move very quickly. And then suppose you want, let's say, a three-month option. Then as soon as you buy it, the underlying starts moving up very quickly. But the eyeball doesn't move much. So you are not really benefiting from the eyeball movement in any way. But maybe after about 15 days, the eyeball starts to move, also in your favor. But by that time, even if you bought an at the money option, by that time, the underlying has moved up. So your option is no longer at the money. Are you following what I'm doing? Yes, sir. So therefore now you no longer have the maximum vega. Yes. So actually choice of strike is a very complex uh, game to play which has multiple moving parts. But you should be aware of all these parts. Theoretically you should know what are all the moving parts. Now in fact you might decide that I'm just going to make my life simple and just buy low eyeball, sell high eyeball. You can always operate like that, it's not that you can't operate. But theoretically, since you're studying for an MBA, you should know theoretically what are all the moving parts in this. So every decision problem that you have in option trading, you have to know the theory of how to solve these decision problems. Okay, and please remember, hopefully you pay attention to all this and revise properly because you will not find it uh, written in the structured manner in any book. Okay.
okay, as to how exactly to solve the decision problem. I've given you a very structured logic as to how to solve the decision problem. So please make sure you understand that. Okay, so let's continue here. Yes, please don't get restless. When <laughs> I'm worried that when people come, when they come, when people might get restless and start scratching the screen or something like that out of frustration. Okay, just wait. Yes, what is Sushant saying? <laughs> Sushant has, I'm the one who's talking constantly. I'm the one who should be getting tired. And you guys are jumping up and down. Okay, we have covered this. Okay, once again, you can see that the Vega is generally the highest for at the money options. Okay, and you can see one more thing in this chart. What else do you see? I don't know if you guys can see the uh, the labeling at the back end, at the last the last bench. The green is the nine month, and the black is three months. So Vega is longer dated options have higher or lower Vega. Yes, Chabra and Parveen also in discussion. Sina, please write. Chabra and Parveen also in conference. I was going to ask him a question. Sorry? I didn't get your question. First of all, don't speak in Hindi. You are in a business school, you should speak in English. What is the problem? You have a problem. <laughs> so we have three candidates. Please specify who with Chabra because Shivani is also Oh, that Chabra, no, I call her Shivani. No, I call him Chabra. The, the rule is already clear. The rule is already clear. Okay? All right. Okay, guys. Once again, you can see from this chart, this we have already discussed. That longer, that is reinforcing the idea. Longer dated options have higher Vega. Okay? I was going to ask Chabra that question. But uh, anyway, so is this clear? So just we are recapping this theta, this rule you already know. Okay, so this is where I have written the, I have rewritten the notes. Okay, uh, I've just added this element once again, and I will bring in the notes from today. The point is, what you have learned today is that Vega is highest for at the money options, and it's not the same for all the different types of options. Okay, let's go quickly through this. Okay, payoffs and profit profiles okay let's understand this two new terms you are learning payoff profiles and profit profiles profile is just a drawing okay if i take a silhouette of somebody and i just draw the the nose and the chin and all that we can just say it's a profile okay so uh, so this profile is just a plot so we are learning two new words payoff profile versus profit profile Okay, so one thing you have to understand is the language in this particular software, although we are using it a lot. Let's close this. Okay, maybe you can't read all the numbers, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this payoff graphs. Now, you have to understand that this term here, because everybody in the industry is not always very particular about the use of the language, but you need to be particular as an MBA student. So the use of the word payoff in this particular software is not correct, okay? So let's just plot it and then we'll see. So let's just do a long call plot, okay? Okay, so now you can see this. There are two plots. Okay, now here, I, maybe the, the colors are not sufficiently distinct. Uh, this blue one is the, what they're calling the theoretical PNL. Okay, and the black one is what they're calling the payoff. Okay, but this is actually wrong because what they're actually showing is. See, this particular, so and maybe this is not the right uh, term, uh, chart to start with. We should start with the Hull chart. And I have got references. Okay. 
Okay, so let's start with this. Yes, no smart aleck comments, please. Be quiet, be disciplined. Discipline is very important. If you don't have discipline, you'll have a lot of problems in life. Okay, don't just give in to everything. Whatever impulse you have, you don't give in to it. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, long call, this is what is called a, what does it say here, this terminology is correct, this is from your textbook, okay, uh, so this, if you follow the figure, the chapter numbering and the figure numbering I've given you in the notes, okay, this, this may be, I don't go by this figure number, because this may be from a different version, okay, so you go with this, you go with the page number that I've given you in the text, okay, so this terminology is correct, this is the profit profile. Okay, this is a profit profile for a long call. Let me just try and understand. Just try and understand this. Have you seen this diagram before? Yes. Sir. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. You have seen it, right? You did options. Yes. In every point, you did all this. Yes. Sir. You've done all this. Yes. Oh, great. Then what are the, these are called hockey state diagram. You know that? Yes. In options, if somebody asks you, these are called hockey stick diagrams. So, what kind of hockey do you think they are referring to? They are going to be here in about 5 10 minutes. That's okay. Whenever. Daniel, I'll have to keep on teaching until they I come. I think most probably they'll ask both of you to leave and they just talk to them. Okay, fine. Anyway, I'll keep teaching until they come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> be quiet. Please, one sec. So you understood here, you understood, you understood this point, look at what all that, you understood this point, why is this, you've done all these payoff profit profiles, no sir, some are saying no sir, okay. so let's do it once again, let's do it for the sake of, so many people are saying they haven't done it, you haven't done it, okay, so please understand this profit profile, why is this the right one, can you see at the back, Vibhu, can you see, you can see everything here, long call, the bottom below the below zero on the y-axis can you see okay minus five why is it minus five here who can tell me premium because you have paid five dollar premium okay now this is this is an expiration diagram please be clear about this okay please make sure the basics are also clear okay this is an expiration diagram okay that means we are plotting. How is this plot derived? Be very clear about your fundamentals. Okay, make sure your fundamentals are very clear. How is this profit? What is on the y-axis? Profit. profit. Okay, net profit. Profit is a net profit concept. Okay, it is not the payoff. It is the profit. So we are going to make a distinction between profit and payoff. So we are plotting. What is the strike price? Hundred. So if the option call option exercise. If the call option expires, if the underlying expires at 80, if the option expires and the underlying is at 80, are you going to exercise your 100 strike call? No, 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 sir. no, because you can buy the underlying in the market at 80. So why should we exercise the call option and buy it at 100? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So therefore, what is your profit? You paid five dollars premium. You pay five dollar premium. Yes, sir. Okay, then I buy medical insurance for twenty five thousand, and I don't fall sick in the year. So I my PNL is minus twenty five thousand. Yes, sir. Okay. So therefore, uh, in this case, eighty dollars underlying premiums are eighty dollars. My plot is minus five. Okay, because uh, it, it's I lo losing the premium, not taking any money. Okay. All right. Now, why is it not? At 100, what is my PNL? When the underlying condition, let's say 100, uh, just about 100. Do I exercise at 100? Still minus. Just above 100, I start exercising. So then, shouldn't my, let's say for 100, 102, for 102 here, let's say this is 102, okay? Please look at the screen, everybody. Ayush, Akpal, look at the screen. One or two here. It says one or two. Why is the plot not above zero? 
Why should my, my profit be above zero if the, if the underlying is one or two? Okay, is this clear? The profit, even at one or two, my profit profile is not above the zero line because I'm making only two dollar profit from exercise and I've paid five dollars for a uh, stock. Alright, this has already gone into short call, but let's just get one thing clear. Okay, guys. So, at what point? At what point does this cross the zero line? Write down Nikhil and Nimish, same team. Nikhil and right, Nikhil, they're only there. Sorry? Sorry? I didn't understand what you said. Don't make small like comments. We don't have time for all this. Just write Nikhil then, the same team, then write Nikhil. Okay, guys, at what point does it cross the zero line? At 105. Okay, just above 105. Yes. When the underlying is above 105, your profit from the exercise exceeds the money spent on the premium. Yes. Yes. So the line crosses above the zero line. Yes. Okay, the profit plot. Okay. So understand that this is actually called a profit diagram. Yes. And these are also called hockey stick diagrams. Yes. Okay. So obviously they are not referring to field hockey, they are referring to ice hockey. Yes. Because it looks like the ice hockey stick, yes. right? Yes. So all right, now let's look at one more thing here, which is not correct. Okay. What these guys have done, the payoff is blank. Okay. One minute. So the use of the term payoff here is not correct. Okay. What they mean is actually, when you say payoff, all that payoff means is written in your notes, you don't have to read it. Uh, I mean, you don't have to write it down. But uh, you just have to understand this clearly now. We use two different terms. Profit is for what you saw. Profit is basically whatever you make on the option, it's a net concept. Whatever you make on the option for the exercise, adjusted for whatever you paid in premium. Okay? Payoff is without reference to the PD premium. Payoff is just what you are making on the option. That is the payoff. Okay, that's why here the hundred long call. That's why you see it's crossing the zero line at what point? It's crossing the zero line at what point? Hundred. Because it's the payoff. Okay. So what they have called the theoretical PNL. I just wanted to show this because they have both the plots in one chart. Okay. But the terminology here is not correct. So please be very careful about this because you are also using software to study. So what they are calling the theoretical PNL is actually what should be called the payoff, which is without reference to the premium, just the profit or loss on the option. Okay, so that will cross the zero line at 100 itself, at the strike. Okay, so, yes? Okay, I'll, I'll, let's make a deal, guys. Nice.